guys to welcome you first and all to uh, the very first of what is going to be a, a probably shorter series, four or five weeks, something like that, into where I'm going to show you guys how to use regular old materials that you can get anywhere um, to actually achieve a re relative good portrait. Um, it's um, I've got my materials all set up on the other side and I'm going to turn the camera around here in a minute and show you. And with that, I'm going to prove something that you don't need artist quality materials to actually make something really nice. Um, this is a good way to practice. Um, it's cheap, it's bountiful, you can get it anywhere, and there's really no use to start out with anything else but those until you actually get the basics of the techniques um, under control. Before that, it has no use of spending 60, 70, 80, 50, whatever dollars on an expensive set of oils, an expensive set of acrylics, and then mess up every time and get all frustrated. And it um, the paints that I'm going to use are these. Um, they're the Walmart brand. All right, screen. There we go. It's the the Walmart Apple Barrel brand. Um, first, I'm going to go through all the colors that I'm going to use. I'm going to use a brown. Um, any color brown. It really doesn't matter. This is, uh, let's see, this is burnt umber. And uh, you can get any, this is what they call liquid. You can hear it. It's liquid acrylic. Um, any liquid acrylic you can mix. It doesn't matter which brand. If you could get the, the, the craft, bra craft paint or, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as it's liquid acrylic, you can, you can mix it with any other type of water-based paint. Um, I've got a bag of really nasty ass um, what you call them watercolors right here that I'm going to use too these are the five dollar sets that you can get at Michael's from Artist Loft I brown red you don't have to get an orange but I got one that was on sale because uh, I'm going to use a, uh, a pinkish color and a blue and for uh, the basis I'm going to use a it's a mason jar. This is a off-colored white that I got from the do-it-yourself store. Uh, latex base, because latex base is water-based, so you can mix it. So I'm going to use this as a base. It's just a pure white that I make myself. Um, it's in a little container by itself. Black. Um, I get them. Um, I make my own black and white. These are the uh, paints that I'm going to use. These are just the craft paints you get at Walmart, but all, all mangled up. No, that's not completely true. So these are actually from uh, Michaels. These come in a, in a set. Nice little picture. Yeah. These are actually in a set. And uh, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use um, a couple of fine ones. Like these. Okay. I'm going to use a broader flat brush. That's this. You can kind of see it by my finger. I am going to use, and seriously, are these. See how they kind of look like mushrooms? Okay, they started out being smaller filbert brushes, like these. The filbert means that it's got a flat top, but the edges on the side are kind of angled on the side. Okay, for uh, the little jobs. Um, I've got my favorites, everybody's got their favorites. Is what I use as a palette for my acrylics. They are um, they're came from the dollar store and they're uh, um, snack trays. Everybody, there's on my, on my blog, um, there is a um, PDF, two of them that you can download. One of them has the facial proportions in it if you want to draw one yourself. The other one actually has um, two pictures in it that we're going to do in this series. We're going to do this one and we're going to do this one. Now as you noticed this one has little squares on it and it is the easiest way to get a picture from a sketch to your piece of paper. This piece of paper is 18 by 24 inches it uh, comes off the sketchbook that you actually saw in the pictures on the PDF. Um, it's clipped to my drawing board. And both of them. 
and that's where I'm going to start in a minute. Um, the squares is first what I did, is, and I used a ruler and divided it up in equal bits on either side, both ways. So you got perfectly square little squares. Okay, you count out the little squares. You make the same amount of squares on a big of piece of paper that you're actually wanting to paint or draw on, and you number them. That works actually. That works the best for me, so you won't lose your place. And then it is as simple as literally paint of drawing in what you see. You follow which block you're actually working in, and you look which one on your piece of paper you're working in. And it is easiest to start out with if you can see this. Can you see that? Yes, you can. See how that eye is actually split right there by one of the um, squares? That's a cool way to start. So you just count out the squares that way, count out the squares that way. You have the same amount of squares on your drawing board. So you go that way, that way, this is where your eye is. I always start with the eye. Got my pencil right here. This is a very special, pe uh, special pencil. Uh, you cannot get anywhere else. It's it's um, it's not a must, but if you can, it works the best. It has duckies on it. I picked this this uh, portrait to start out with. Is for a few reasons. Uh, first of all, it is pretty well defined in colors. Um, if you can see the uh, the cheekbones and and uh, underneath by her nose and there's a lot of dark right where the eyes are right there and there there and there those are really awesome um, characteristics of this portrait there's another reason why I picked it if you can see she's got a lot of lines in her face she's very wrinkled and then the, you know those beautiful blue eyes um, this will make an excellent excellent portrait because it has so much ca uh, a character in her face that it is easy to draw. The what I'm going to do is I've got a mix of brown and I've got a mix of bla uh, uh, black and brown. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start picking out the darkest parts. I'm gonna do right now is just nothing more but pick out the other the second darkest thing. I work from dark to light and then we go go all the way over it again. So there's another line right here. At this point you can start adding the lines if you desire so let's see. Uh, the mouth is probably another good thing to start of uh, to do. Um, if you want, at this point, you could uh, add just a little bit of red to it, one part, just a little bit. 
and you end up with a brown rose color. And we're going to add that to the cheeks. So from here, it will go up to down here. And I can use a bigger brush to that. I can find my bigger brush again. Right here. As you have noticed, I have not clean cleaned my brush yet. Don't worry if it's not exactly the, t the tone you're looking for. We're going to go over it again. As you can see, it starts to flare out there. That means that, that the brush is running out of paint, which is good. That will get you the, uh, the effect that we're going to uh, finish the whole painting with in a minute. And this is just the brown with a little bit of white with uh, a buttload of water. That way that look, if I go over the nose, I can either swipe it off with my with my with a free finger. Oh uh, yeah, I instigate all the time, that's what I do. I have to have to torment T. going right there and it is not that important um, about tones because we're still going to change it if it's there we know there's going to be a shadow right there okay well I had paint on my brush what I do is I wipe it wipe it on on a piece of uh, paper The brush still holds paint, so what I'm going to do now is, as, is color the lighter parts in. Just rub that paint in, rub it, rub it, rub it. As you can see, there's still paint on it, there's plenty enough on it. I got. Okay. okay, a lot of people who are just starting out with painting go like, okay, how do you hold a brush? There is no wrong, all right. You know, if you want to go like this, you can't. But the further you hold it back, the less control you've got. You've been writing for years and years and years, I hope, unless hold it like you would hold a pen. This gives you the most control. Pinky or whatever on the on the thing with acrylics, I just painted these things last and already dry. So whole hand on it, it doesn't matter because the oils of your hand does not involve anything with the acrylic. Go like that. I actually just drew with my pencil with my uh with my paintbrush. Okay, so just as you feel comfortable with, the smaller the brush, the easier it is to hold it closer and just kind of hold it like a pen. It'll actually give you the bestest results. Really just this color with more white added. I'm going to add some water to it because my paints are drying up super duper fast. The paints are actually mixing in my palette as we speak. Color right there. And I'm going to lighten this part up a little bit. And then there is this part right here. Right here. Okay, so. And because I add water to it, um, it it'll spread nicely, and it, um, but it won't cover the darker parts. That's the whole. See which one will I use? I'm gonna use my my flat brush again. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna paint in the the the, the, the darkest orange parts that I can.
it builds up the uh, the pigment underneath, and it's easier to go to a, uh, a flesh tone when it is uh, done in. Um, yeah. Exactly. Um, in oils, what I'm going to do with the other one, this I'm going to actually show you. This is the one that, well, this is the easiest. This is the one that actually shows you how to do it if you can do it with color pencils. The other one that we're going to do the other time, this one. Different paper, very smooth. Um, this one will get glazed with the acrylic. But we're working on this one for now. Um, I'm working all the oranges in. We don't want it too orange because she will start looking like an Oompa Loompa. Yeah, we also don't want to make it too brown because she's Asian. Alright, I'm relatively happy with how this is coming along. Um, the, 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 the fun part, so I'm going to take my, my, my blue and I'm going to add some white to my blue, just a little bit. Um, try making it a color that you're working with lighter than you see in your painting. It's easier to correct it. Yeah, as you can see, this is way lighter than it actually is on the paint, which is fine because we're going to be spending a couple of minutes on this. Okay, I'm not going to go to the other eye. Um, I'm actually going to leave that as it is and do that the other time. Um, a lot of color that a lot of people are not using in their portraits is gray. There's actually more gray in it than you think. As long as you, if you make a base gray, it works really well. Add some of the skin tone to it that's next to it, and you'll get a nice gradation to it. Um, if you look at the eye, um, there's purple in it. So I'm going to mix up my purple with some water. And if it's too um, purpley, add just a little bit of brown. That's what I've done right here. And you end up with like an aubergine color. The only downside to a, pur uh, a blue palette, purple and blue are kind of the butt to actually mix. Alright, so I'm going to put in the line of the eye right now. That is going to be right here. And it's going to go all around the eye. There we go. And there's another line that goes underneath the pupil, right there. And now I'm going to make the blue. There's a blue line over there. Uh, to darken the blue, I'm going to take some brown and add some of the blue to make a darker blue. Okay, you can, uh, I can't show you my palette because my white will fall out. But I'm mixing really small portions at the moment. So an hour and a half in, and we've got most of the underpainting in, and we're actually going in and doing the fun parts right now. I am going to start adding in the skin tone, which is a brown, red, white, and orange mix until you get the amount of colors. There we go. And now this is roughly the skin tone that I'm actually looking for. So I am going to put that underneath to add a little bit more water to it.
which will put some more distinction in it too. Right now it just kind of looks odd. I'm finding that I'm losing definition. Just redefining the shadows that I've slowly lost over time and uh, putting them where they're actually like supposed to go. I want to thank everybody for showing up, and um, I'll, I'll keep the stream on for a couple more minutes, but I want to, I'm going to quit the recording now. So thank you for showing up, uh, thank you for all the questions, keep them coming, um, emailing, email them to me, uh, themasterviking at hotmail.com, or leave it down in the comments if you're seeing this on YouTube, and uh, thank you very much.